Samsung's recently released S21 series is new and exciting with a cool new design that's weird but cool and has a new camera bump and everything. Anyway, whilst this has been going on, many reviewers and outlets have been quick to point out Samsung's new flagship pricing. The S21, S21 Plus and S21 Ultra are all $200 cheaper than their 2020 counterparts. But is this Samsung being super generous or is the firm a little more sneaky about its new product lineup and the pricing to go with it? Oh, and for those aggressively typing in the comments right now, no, it's not got anything to do with the charger. For this whole video to make any kind of sense, we have to look back at a couple of other generations, older generations, of the Galaxy series, namely the Galaxy S9 series, the S10 series, and the S20 series. Firstly, the S9 and S9 Plus were the only two devices of that generation. A $720 base model with premium features and pricing, and a Plus model for those who wanted an extra camera, bigger battery, and bigger display. Oh, and who could also spare a little extra cash. This then morphed into a four phone catalog with the S10 series. A base model and plus model like before, but now with a smaller, cheaper, slightly cut down model and a larger, more feature rich, pricier model to go on top. All phones were metal and glass or ceramic and they were all premium devices with premium feature sets. Moving to the S20 series, this is where things get a little bit confusing. The base model was now $1,000 with the Plus coming in at $200 more and the new Ultra SKU that seemed to replace the Plus 5G model from the previous year came in at an extra $200 above that. What also launched at this time was the Galaxy S10 Lite. Um, okay. And then further down the line, the S20 FE which seemed to replace the S10 Lite but with some updated specs. Of all five models that released last year, the S20 FE seemed to get the most positive attention towards the end of the year. Whether that's because it's a more budget oriented device in a world that's kind of scarce for money right now, or because it does all of what most people want, but without any extra features and costs a lot less. Either way, the device is essentially a cheaper S20, but with a plastic back, slightly thicker bezels, a slightly cut down camera stack, and a larger battery. So overall, what's not to love really? And Samsung was thinking exactly the same. So what they did is make their current mainstream device, the S21, essentially just an S20 FE that's been updated. In fact, their whole product stack has kind of moved. The S21 sits and fits roughly where the FE would have been. The S21 Plus sits roughly where the base S20 would have been. And the Ultra now sits where the S20 Plus would have been. This way, the cut down model can still come across as one of the flagship models, but Samsung can still make the compromises to build quality, etc., because it dropped the price by $200. It's the naming scheme that's changed, not necessarily the pricing. Looking at the specs next to each other, you can kind of see that the S21 is a bit of a hybrid of the S20 and the S20 FE, but with 2021 specs. It's more the size of the S20, but it has thicker bezels like the FE. It's got the smaller display size of the S20, but the lower resolution of the FE. There don't seem to have been any camera compromises, which is fantastic. But the big ones are that the S21 has a plastic back of the FE, while more durable, it's not quite as premium feeling. And the charger is now missing from the box, where it previously was included with both models. Not to call the S21 a bad phone by any means, it's not, it's a great phone. But it just sits slightly differently in the pricing and the product stack, and in fact in the market, compared to where the S20 was. Which then begs the question, will we see an S21 FE this year? Because if you remember from last year, the FE didn't actually get released until quite a few months after the S20 series. Well, the only way I can see this happening is if the firm makes a more severely cut down model with like a 1080p 60Hz display and maybe two cameras instead of three. However, a phone like that would be getting very close to Samsung's own A series of devices. But whilst it's very unlikely to happen, Samsung has never been afraid to just add more products to its lineup, so it could happen. We should probably keep an open mind on that and let us know in the comments if you think we will see an S21 FE anyway. And what do you think about the S21 series overall? We wanna hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Whilst you're down there, please do hit like and subscribe to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Authority and I'll catch you later.